Welcome to Watch, Review, Repeat. This is the podcast where two best friends discuss the latest in film and television and then do it all over again the following week. My name is Colton Brown and joining me is Mr. Andrew Meadows. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. How about yourself? You know, same old, same old. Sticking to the uh, to the usual routine and um, it's all right. The semester is winding down, thankfully. Uh, just, just I think, uh, technically less than a week now at this point. Um, and then it'll wow. be summer. You know, the the most exciting summer of all when we have so many good movies to look forward to and <laughs> theaters that are definitely open that we're definitely going to. And so. your ass is locked in quarantine, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's been all right. Unless um, you're in Florida and we don't give a uh, fuck, we're going to open well, everything if you're, up. If you're in, if you're in Georgia, I think it's even worse. I think they're literally opening like, hey, what's what's a business where you have to touch every single person that comes in the door? <laughs> Open it up immediately. <laughs> That's the world. It's a great plan. It's a great it. plan. Either way, um, yes, uh, things are not. Uh, I don't think things are on the cusp of reopening up in Pennsylvania anytime soon. Uh, at least there have not been any indications to that effect. But. Uh, I guess we'll see. I guess we shall see. Um, so yeah, you, you you've been good. Been up to anything exciting lately? We'll um, talk about it a little bit later. But you know, yeah, there's a section wanna... dedicated to that. Um, I tell you what, I have been up to. I have been mm. up to watching a series called Devs. Oh, that's right. I forgot we're supposed to introduce the topic for the week. I figure people can read the title. <laughs> that's what I've been up to. Um, yeah. More sporadically than I would have liked. I would have liked to just kind of grind it out. I think you probably have that well, kind of experience. Well, I, I, I effectively binge watched it. Um, not like, you know, like eight in a row type thing, but you've been watching it more or less week to week with, I guess, probably some gaps kind of in there overall. But that's right. I, I, I think I started it last week and I actually just finished the finale earlier today. Um, I had started it last night and kind of didn't end up finishing it. I was too tired to, to kind of make it to the end. I kind of, I, I knew that as is the case with any Alex Garland piece, it's going to make you think. And, uh, my brain was not in the mood to think. And so I decided to wait until I had a little bit more sleep in my system. And I'm, I'm glad that I did end up waiting. Um, and we'll talk about, you know, the, the things that make you think a little bit later when we talk about the show as well. But yeah, it was, uh, it was it was a good experience. I and I, I didn't I didn't watch it in so compressed of a time frame that it got overwhelming. Like I, I think I probably was about a week, like you know, about seven days. I, I probably feel like that's a good average, pace. close to an episode yeah. a day, more or less. That's a good pace. Let yeah. you think about every episode. Essentially, is what that is what that does. Right. I, I don't I don't think it's well. We'll talk about it later. But I think it's a show that you know one at a time is is kind of a good way to treat it. I think there's always kind of a lot going on in most of the episodes that that you know lets you it's i think it's a show that rewards you sitting and pondering on it at least for a little while instead of just kind of rolling right into the next one but we will talk about it um we can also talk about a a fun fact uh, perhaps related to it if you have one available so when we were discussing this i don't know if we ever we ever got to it or not um but i always thought there was a little bit of confusion at least there was for me uh as to why this is uh shown as a um an FX exclusive show, but okay. exclusive on Hulu. Like it's not going to touch yeah. the FX network and blah, 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 blah. Um, so I started looking into it and did we ever talk about why they did it this way? Like what, what it is to be a, um, uh, effects on Hulu show. Yes. Effects on Hulu. Uh, I, I don't think so. I think we were mostly just confused because it, the branding seemed very odd. So what's the scoop? So the scoop is, and this is coming from IndieWire, but I do think that they rounded it up pretty nice. Um, uh, There's FX, there's Hulu, and now there's Disney's absorption of of Hulu and FX. So they own both companies. Right, Um, right. And essentially what this is, is this is a push towards, uh, and this is from IndieWire's words essentially is what it is, um, this is Disney's way to push more adult oriented, uh, material toward a streaming platform. So, um, FX is going to be their, essentially their adult oriented platform, uh, for, and that's going to get pushed over to Hulu. Um, and it started with, with devs. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Okay. If that makes sense. Does that make sense the way I worded that? Yeah. I mean, I always kind of knew that they intended that kind of split, but it it just seemed odd that they ended up pushing this from FX, the network itself, to let's just 
like you do you think, you think it's just is it is it just as simple as it's part of a, a bigger kind of desire to 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 flesh out the streaming side of things on hulu or i mean that... that part i don't know i would i would imagine okay. so draw people hey listen we have this we have alex garland he's got this this mini series on on f on it i mean it's from fx but it's only on hulu um well i mean i, I guess i guess i will say this it's probably the first time that i've booted up hulu to stream a show that wasn't currently airing on live tv in a long time um it, it's personally speaking i guess handmaid's tale has been on there and i haven't seen that and i know you have I don't know if you're caught up, but no, I'm not caught um, up. But yeah, I, I, I saw that show, and then I mean, this is the second show I've seen on Hulu. Well, that's what I mean. Like, I, like I guess it kind of makes sense as if if they're trying to to round out kind of the the, the you know the the resume of of Hulu as a streaming service. We say, hey, we got this for you. Um, we have Disney so, Plus, which is which is you know family oriented material, and then we have Hulu, right. which is adult oriented material. So um, just put the new mutants on it. What are you waiting for? And then of course you have you have you know cable television fx which is you know censored by the what mpaa or whatever yeah that's yeah that's true there's certainly some moments here where they would have had to at least in every episode i don't think yeah you would have to edit some stuff for sure i feel like fx has always kind of pushed the envelope uh, the envelope a little bit like Mm -hmm. I, i definitely feel like there's been some butt shots on some prior shows maybe some sons of anarchy um i could be wrong butt shots is that on fx actually i don't know I think it's. I don't know. I think that's FX. I don't think it's. I AMC. thought it was. We could fact check that, right? Is there a way to do that? Do we have an internet available to us? Butt shots, FX. Show me all the FX butts. <laughs> uh, yes, Sons of Anarchy was on FX. That's what I was talking about. And there and were I have butts. Been, I have been shown several pictures of Charlie Hunnam's butt from that show. Um, <laughs> not going to reveal <laughs> who showed them to me, but I know that they're out there. Um, so yeah, cool. So here, you know, uh, I guess, I guess if, if nothing else to kind of summarize what we've been saying, this is a streaming show. Effectively, it is available on Hulu, exclusively on Hulu. It was an FX kind of co-production, I guess, but, uh, or maybe just a regular production. I'm not even sure. But, um, yeah, if you want, if you want to take a look and, 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 and poke your head into the world of devs, uh, watch all eight episodes, uh, and, uh, listen to our full spoiler coverage a little bit later in this episode. That's, that's the way to do it. So, um, any other thoughts on that FX no, on Hulu? No, that's it, dude. Do we have have we have we cleared the air? Do we do we now understand? Oh, FX on Hulu, I get it. I still don't fully get it, but I'm I'm a little bit on uh, less shaky ground, I guess, than before. I mean, if it, I feel like if they want to make an adult oriented miniseries, the most unrestricted path to that is to put it on the Hulus. Yeah, which yeah, I think I kinda, that's that squares. I kind of think. You know, I kind of think that they should probably produce. If if it were me, if I was an executive, what I would do is is I have I have a more censored platform and I have a non censored platform. I'm going to push everything to the non censored platform and then I'll strip it down to put it on the censored platform. Mm. Like eventually, if you want to put devs on fucking FX on cable TV, you can. You just got to strip it right. down. Yeah, you just you know, bleep out the fox and all that. Yeah. So, I mean, I feel like that should be their platform. That that should be the way moving forward. Um, I, I I just don't see the whole move to cable television at this point. Like we're we're in a different era. We're moving very fast to a different to a different thing. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. You could certainly look at live television. I, I think it's live pretty like, antiquated, like dramas and stuff like that. Like it, it it certainly seems like it's starting to become more of a relic of the past. Like, I think it's, you know, the flip side is, like, sports and stuff like that. Like, that's kind of the perfect environment for it. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Cable is certainly, uh, you know, not as prevalent as it once was, we could say. So, so yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Streaming streaming is the future, perhaps. Uh, and uh, FX on Hulu is just perhaps the latest example of that. Uh, so, we have a lot of news. Uh, if you want to switch over to some news. We do have a fair amount of news. It's been a little while since we talked about Onward. A lot of, well, maybe not as many delays as we have talked about previously, but certainly a fair amount of uh, COVID-19 induced delays for for films, some kind of changes uh, happening in terms of the release date schedules and stuff like that. So I'm just going to run through the latest on that. And then uh, we have a very important piece of news, which I know Andrew is 
chomping at the bit to talk about, <laughs> but he's gonna he's gonna have to wait his turn. God damn it, he's gonna have to wait his turn. Uh, so on Disney's side of things, uh, Pixar's Soul has uh, finally been bumped. Uh, it was originally scheduled June nineteenth. We had talked about it a couple times of being like. Mm, I don't know what's going to happen here, you know, and, and they hadn't moved it, but they have now made the move. It's going to be heading to the Thanksgiving holiday period. November 20th is it is, is when it's now expected to open. Um, and as a result, it is bumping uh, the Disney animated movie Raya and the Last Dragon to March of 2021. So, you know, yet another, yet another one falls. Um, WB has made... Uh, quite a few moves uh, as well. Um, a lot of it on the DC side of things. Uh, I think some other changes as well. Uh, perhaps most notably, the Batman has been pushed from June of 2021 to October 1st of 2021. So it's, uh, <sighs> it's, a, few, it's a few weeks before your birthday, but we'll consider it an, an, an early birthday present. That helps. That helps justify That's it, right? That's true. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. It's, it's something. Um, I Let's see what else. Uh, Tenant has not been bumped as of yet, we shall see. We shall see. Um, Sopranos prequel, Many Saints of Newark, bumped from September to March of 2021 as well. Um, DC stuff. Uh, let's see. The Flash actually moved up somehow from <laughs> July of 2022 to, to June of 2022. So about a month earlier. Uh, so they're moving. Will, they're moving shit two years from now. Yeah, well, they they shuffled a lot of things. So the other one is Shazam 2, which got bumped from April of 2022 to November of 2022. And I think a lot of it, it's like, it, depending on where things are in like the production process. That's like, true. Like, obviously, the Batman, like, it's in a hard spot because it was in the middle of filming and, and it can't film right now. So inevitably, there's going to be a delay. But even for the other ones, like, you probably can't. I mean, like, if you had a writer's room on something, you could just have people doing Zoom meetings and stuff like that and probably hashing things out. Like, pre-production probably could work to some extent remotely, but it's just, like, there's just there's so much uncertainty in or terms of, post. like, when you, when you could even do anything. Post, post, post could work remotely, too, and I think you, you are seeing some of that. And I think that movies that hopefully do make their debuts this year are, are inevitably going to have to do some of the remote work in post. I think video game studios are also, like, working Posting. remotely, too. Yeah. You know, it's so it's viable. So it's it's possible. It's obviously just challenging um, for 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 one reason or another. But I think I think I think it's the uncertainty mostly that's just like you know what we don't know when we'll actually even be able to even if we're done with pre production and ready to go on filming, we still might not be able to do that for months. Probably won't be able to do that for months realistically. So just just the whole timeline shifts around as a result of that. Um, I think that's kind of mostly it on the WB side of things. There's a few other things that moved around, but I figured the DC ones were the most uh, kind of noteworthy. Um, I, I did did mean to say on the Flash, I, I'm not convinced that it's going to happen, um, given that it's on its now fifth or sixth director. Uh, its star, Ezra Miller, has been embroiled in, shall we say, a controversy of late oh um, yeah what's that controversy i haven't heard about that controversy uh he 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 was filmed choking a woman outside of a bar which is usually <laughs> behavior that is not legal so <laughs> wb has made no comments on it what? obviously you know they had the whole johnny depp thing with um holy shit with uh fantastic <laughs> beasts and they basically did nothing about that either too so it's kind of i guess there's precedent for wb to just bury their eh, head in the sand and not him. react to anything but I don't know. It it was just kind of like uh, I just remember when the video came out. Like even the DC cinematic subreddit, which is like they love that shit. I mean, Zack Snyder is their god. Um, they were just kind of like, so who's going to be the new Flash? You know, kind of kind of reaction. So I feel like if even those people can can kind of reconcile it, then it doesn't seem like it would be a bridge too far for for the studio to also recognize that. But uh, we shall see. Um, we shall see. Uh, San Diego Comic Con, you know, on the on the the the, the superhero thing, not happening this yeah, year. What San Diego Comic Con? Shut Comic-Con. down, <laughs> shut down, canceled for the first time in its fifty uh, year history. Gee whiz! Um, so it is expected to return July of twenty twenty one. I'm kind of surprised they're not doing like some sort of remote version of things. I don't know. I just kind of I mean like you couldn't really do the Comic Con aspect of it of like you know booths and stuff like that but like you could do online panels you know you could do remote panels like just you could do some sort of like one day kind of thing like i think there's already been something like that i just kind of feel like 
if you have already these, you know, guests in place and stuff like that, like, I don't know, like there's already been so much money. I'm sure it's been spent on this thing. I just kind of feel like you could salvage it into something to make something out of nothing and still bring some kind of revenue stream back towards Comic-Con. But I don't know. Anyway, wasn't planning on going. Um, and, uh, <laughs> I, I guess I won't be now. <laughs> um, two more things in terms of uh, delays. Uh, first of which, Venom 2, or as it is now called, Venom let there be carnage. No, uh, that's the <laughs> that's the name. I didn't I didn't I didn't put it on the script just to fuck with you. That's that's the new title. That's it. So this is this is this is double news really. We got a new title, Holy got a new shit. release date. So Venom let the uh, oh god. Uh Venom let there be carnage will be uh moving from October of this year to June Jesus of 2021. Christ. Move it to 2025. So, like let's just fucking forget is, about it. I, 2021 we're gonna have to do a double episode every fucking week i think because there's gonna be so much shit coming out it's crazy um it's the former date of uh when the batman was gonna come out so instead of seeing the batman we get to see venom too i'm sorry let venom there, let there be carnage um that's a stupid fucking name who the, who the featuring, with that? featuring woody harrelson as as uh as old cletus cassidy slash carnage um and we can only hope that um uh, he will turn in a seller performance that's as he did in that, that post credit scene. Damn, so that's gonna be awful. Directed by Andy Circus. So uh, maybe maybe he brings a little, he, little panache he, to it. Did he did he did he come up with the title, you think? Do you think he said I had the perfect name for it? Venom. Let there be carnage. That's it. That's what we're I don't going know. With. I I I personally blame Avi Arid, who is like the producer on this that's been trying to stuff venom into movies since spider-man 3 so i'm pretty sure it's his fault and he probably thinks it's the greatest title of all time so av aaron that name's familiar is that the castlevania guy no no he's uh he's done like stuff with marvel forever basically since like the early 2000s marvel movies like you probably always just seen his name pop up in credits with like said the sam raimi spider-man stuff x-men like all all the early pre-marvel studio gotcha. stuff was he had his he had his fingers deep in them so and uh it's no coincidence that a lot of them were not good <laughs> um last but not least on the 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 not really even a delay here um wb is uh sending scoob scoob uh straight to on demand uh it is skipping the theatrical <laughs> window <laughs> i'm going with Ricky. we're going to Remy. Remy, Reggie. Scoob is goddamn Scoob is going straight to straight to video on demand. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> that was a little that was a little Colt Bronco action from onward there. <laughs> Oh fuck! Uh, <sighs> um, May fifteenth, it will be available both to rent and to buy. Uh, twenty dollars for a rental of forty-eight hours, or twenty-five dollars to buy it forever. Um, so, so that's uh, that's that scoop. Anyway, anyway, moving on, moving on, <laughs> moving on to moving on to other things. We're moving on to other things. I think you need to do um, the entire episode as Shaggy. I think that'd be well. I did. I was. I was doing more of a. a well, I, I did. A, I did a little bit of a like a, a zoinks, you know, <laughs> to, to start with. But uh, I don't know. I think our next piece of news is too important to to taint with with. Are we talking about Denny Villanueva? We're talking about Mr. Villanueva's latest Fuck, yes. his upcoming. You know, project. listen. I, I I would like to put a disclaimer in here. We joked around about Denny Villanueva's name and my lack of pronunciation on everyone's name. Now mm-hmm. all I can see, I I cannot see his French name. <laughs> all I see is I've listened for the past fucking two and a half years or whatever it's been. All I can see is Villanueva. How do you? Uh, that's, pro- how I, that's how. That's how I saw it at first, and then I realized I was just getting the E and the U in the wrong spots. How do you say his name? All right, I'm gonna try this. Let's see if it works. V- I believe it's Vinivu? Denny. Denny, we got Denny right. We got Denny right. Uh, Denny Vinuv, Vinuv, something like yeah. That sounded good. Vinuv. I think that, that 
Denny that, that wasn't as good. Denny Villeneuve. 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 All right, know. we got to move Fuck. on. Let's talk about Villeneuve. Villeneuve. What do you, You've got some thoughts on Dune, certainly. Okay, let's. We got some fucking pictures, dude. We have some really gorgeous fucking pictures. Well, no surprise coming from Mister Vinouf or right. Uh, we have uh, so there. There was another thing. You have the collider. I think not the collider. You have the uh, Vanity Vanity Fair Fair. was the one that. That yeah, there was like a kind of two part thing that they put out. They put part one out, I think, um, a day before the other one. It had one picture with it. It was of Timothy Chalamet, who's playing Paul Atreides, walking like down a, a garbage beach. Yeah, correct. That's that's the one I'm talking. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, got some ships flying around in the background and shit. Are yeah. those ships flying around? Or is that garbage? Oh, I thought that maybe they're garbage ships. I don't know. Maybe they're maybe they're ships. I thought they were like plastic bags. <laughs> no, I think. <laughs> I think they're ships. They're just kind of odd shaped, and I think they're kind of off in the distance. Yeah, but then you have him with his glorious fucking hair. I wish I had. You know, it's pretty. It's pretty luscious looking. I it, mean, that jawline though, really. That jawline, the fucking hair, that badass <laughs> fucking jacket, and most of all, that belt buckle. That fucking <laughs> the belt, belt buckle. buckle's doing it for you. That okay. the fucking gloves. Who the costume designer <laughs> through and through through all these pictures? Fucking aces. The shit is going to mm-hmm. be good. All right, so that's the first picture that was released. I'm actually looking at these through the Collider. The Collider, I don't know if they upscaled the pictures or if they were supplied much higher res pictures, Mm -hmm. Uh, but these pictures on the Collider article are nice. All Um, right, so what are you looking at? uh, So the next one I'm looking at here is uh, Zendaya, I believe her name is. Yep, Mm -hmm. she's in it. She's in it, Um, and once again, the the costume designer's on point here. She's got the thing in the nose. She's got like the desert garb with like the 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 fucking armor thing going on there. I'm not quite sure. It's been a long time since I've seen Dune. Uh, I don't know what character she's playing. Do you know what character she's playing? Uh, She's playing Chani. Uh, She's Chani. She so she's the native. She belongs on the planet. Is that right? I think that yeah, that sounds right. Haven't read the book. Can you usually might tell it because they have out, they, they've got the blue eyes. They 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 take the spice. Yeah, she's she's definitely got bluer eyes here. Which yeah. I don't think they're quite as blue as they have been in past adaptations. No. But that's maybe a good thing. Uh, the next picture I'm looking at here is a uh, it's Timothy Chalamet and Leggy Bay. I believe that is is that Leggy Bay mm-hmm. there? Yep, Timothy Chalamet, Rebecca Ferguson, um, um, mother and son. If I'm not mistaken, I think so. That sounds right. And uh, they're looking over what is the planet of uh, fucking what's the Dune planet? Arrakis. Arrakis. That's it. Fucking Arrakis. Yes, with the Dune worms, the Trimmer worms. Mm -hmm. Um, This armor looks cool. Uh, I don't know what to say about it. I don't. You know, it's a mean cod piece, but a mean cod piece. Yes, you know, you got to protect the cod. You know. Um, Mm -hmm. Sure. Certainly. Moving on from the Dune worms. Of course. <laughs> From the Dune Worms. Uh, I don't know who this next one is. Uh, this is uh, Sharon Duncan Brewster. Okay. All right. I think I'm, we're clearly looking at... Oh, I see. Yep. Yeah. She. Lo- yeah. Okay. Cool. She's got kind of like a tattered kind of... Yeah. Her uh, like her cape uh, thing cape is type like thing. Yeah. fluttering in the wind with the sand. She's obviously a Dune native. Um, and Timothy Chalamet and his mother at some point obviously donned the native, the native Dune garb because that's what mm-hmm. they're wearing in the last picture um and uh she has no th- she has nothing in her nose that's Every, true. everyone doesn't. at this point has something in their nose so i don't know what that is like i said it's been a long time since seen dune never read the books you haven't read them no it, you, well, well I, so I, I, this I, I read like 100 pages of one okay well this one is of two planned adaptations of the first book by Frank Herbert. So, oh, wow. Okay. So of what you read, I don't know how much you remember, to be fair, but you probably actually read probably a decent chunk of what this movie will theoretically be. Maybe it pulls, you know, maybe it, it kind of reorganizes events and takes kind of, you know, it knows what's going to come in the second half. Well, at so some point they arrive stuff on the like planet. That, but... They get to that point. I never got to the point where they got to the planet. Okay. All right. So you, you all right. Well, I, I assume that most of this movie probably takes place on Arrakis, if I had to guess, but... I don't know. I haven't read it. But. We'll see what happens. We shall see what happens. Uh, any other pictures? I got other? Si- I got I got Ray Bay in the Sith garb. She's got her hood. Uh, she's right. looking okay. f- like a serious woman. 
Mm-hmm. Um, Very serious. Mm-hmm. Which is cool. And then we get to probably my favorite, most exciting fucking picture. Can you guess right. what that picture is? Well, I think it's going to be one of two, but I think it's going to be Oscar Isaac in full armor. It's fucking Oscar Isaac in full armor with a long and, and, ass fucking I had a, goatee. I had just, a suspicion you would enjoy this. <laughs> it's just so fucking cool. Is that not the coolest fucking picture you've ever seen of that Oscar is a, Isaac? That is, that, is a, that is a fucking beardy man, and I like he it. He looks like a fucking French conquistador. What Spanish <laughs> conquistador? That didn't make sense. He looks like a conquistador. We'll just stop it at there. Conquistador. <laughs> Oscar Isaac. This sword. This fucking cool-ass armor. Like, I kind of want... Uh, I don't know. What a fucking dude Oscar Isaac is. That's all I get to say. <laughs> And then armor's cool, too. Nothing else needs to be said. I, no. I, I really do think... I think that... It's think worth noting enough. that in the back of the picture you can hear, you can see what their helmet looks like. Apparently that the lesser mm. starful people have helmets. Mm-hmm. And Oscar Isaac and obviously uh, Josh Brolin here mm-hmm. require no helmets because they are more popular people. They like their face to be shown. Mm-hmm. Um, he looks less badass. The armor looks less badass, I think. But it's still yeah, looks not cool. as not as cool. But you know, he's he's still got uh, some impressive facial hair that he's sporting as well. I think it's true. It's well, true. A touch of gray. A touch of gray. Let's move on to the fucking samurai looking Jason Momoa picture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's going on here? I don't Duncan. know. I don't. I have actually legitimately have no idea what's going on here. Um, he just looks like a know. badass, and he's not wearing any armor, and he's kind of cut up a little bit. But it doesn't look like it matters. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I truly don't know what's happening here, but it looks stylish and it looks cool. So, man. And then we have Denis Villeneuve on set, uh, with a very aggressive looking face with a scarf, like he's just like shocked that somebody would say something other than what he's thinking. Doesn't Denny looks very in the moment here, doesn't he? <laughs> yes, like, he, he does. Is in command of this set. <laughs> Look at the guy next to him in the garb. Yeah, he's <laughs> just like, holy <laughs> shit, he went there. I didn't expect that. <laughs> <laughs> he's very in the moment and look at his fucking i have never in my life at the car lot ever <laughs> said anything where i require like a fucking claw like a claw hand a claw. you know he's just over here go over here you know he's just yeah. oh it's badass i bet he and he's wearing fucking camo pants he's directing <laughs> a movie in a button-up nice shirt and camo pants <laughs> Uh, yeah. You don't question Denny. Denny knows what he's doing. Absolutely. That is, that is apparently Javier Bardem that is actually in that picture, and I didn't realize it until I looked a little bit closer and had the, <laughs> the little line under it. I'm like, that is. Javier is, is absolutely eating up what Denny's selling. So <laughs> Yeah, definitely. 100%. It's All right. Good. Last but not least, I think, is there one more? We got a group shot? We have a group shot. Uh, I'm assuming this is House of Trades. Um, it yeah, wasn't House of Trades is what is we're that, looking at here. That's what that is. Okay, so mm-hmm. yeah, you know you have uh, Timothy Chalamet here. We've got mm-hmm. uh, you got a stumpy. Is that the stumpy guy from Devs? Mm-hmm. Sure is. Stephen McKinley Henderson Fucking is yeah. in there. Stephen McKinley Henderson. I never knew his name until Devs. We're gonna talk about him. Mm-hmm. That I just recognized him as that same character. I am. I just. It's made me more excited about fucking Dune. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the cast we already knew was already stacked from the people we recognize, and then you can just throw him now on the on the pile of correct. Like, Fuck, this guy's in it too. Just come on, come on. Now this is, is po- this is unfair? Is Poe Dameron Timothy Chalamet's dad? I believe so. I think Fuck he's yeah. uh, L- L- Lido. Lido Atreides. Atreides. Leto? Yes. Mm-hmm. Jared Jared Leto Atreides. Probably probably not. Probably just Lido. Is uh and then and then is uh, Josh Brolin like the commander of the military? Like who would be the uh, the one that trains him in combat? Timothy Chalamet in combat. I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure. Uh, he he's playing a character named Gurney Halleck. Um, so I, he's clearly not an Atreides, but clearly has some sort of High-ranking position, you know. right? Yeah. Um, you know, he's anyways, cool-ass armor, so he must he must be someone. We need to uh, we need to watch the '80s version. Do a bonus episode on that before we get into yeah, it. Yeah, because we, that's could, we could only... also do the TV miniseries from I think a little bit later too. 
Also, there's an interesting documentary. I didn't see it, but I worked at the theater when it came out called uh, Yodorowsky's Dune. It was basically about an unmade Dune adaptation from, I think, the 60s, maybe. Oh, shit. The, do- the, the documentary came quite a bit later, but yeah, it was like, I think there's a lot of concept art that was drawn up for it and everything, and it seemed like it could have been really interesting, but obviously it didn't happen. Um, I don't know if it was just a case of it's 1960, whatever. We cannot make this fucking movie with our technology <laughs> or, or what the case was, but. Or without spending, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars. And that's a lot for a movie these days, let alone for those days. So I don't know. But yeah, Dune looks fucking awesome. It is currently still set for its December release date. I sincerely hope that it does not get bumped. I, I kind of feel like, you know, that's such a. It's Listen, so far. It's, it's in far their best enough interest that. To- set the world on fucking fire like it was already going to set the world on fire i think listen if they can if they can hold that deadline if they can Mm -hmm. release that movie in december and it's one of the first major movies to come out in december i really think dune has the potential to set up box office world record with the cast hopefully with the marketing material with the people that are devote fans to fucking the dune material itself um, I really think that there's something there that could ah, just blow it up, dude. I'm I'm excited. I haven't been this excited for a movie in a very long time. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, the thing is with Denny, you kind of know, like, you can set your expectations high, but you don't have to feel too worried about them, like, really kind of being let down. Like, maybe it's not the greatest movie of all time type thing, but, like, I think like, it he could has be. not failed us. It, it could, could be, be the maybe. greatest movie yeah. of all time. It could be. I'm not setting my expectations accordingly, I guess is my point. Do you think that, that do you think it has the potential to be better than twenty forty nine? It could be though, Sure. right? It could sure. be. Is there a reason it couldn't 20, be? Twenty forty nine's fucking good. If it's anywhere in that ballpark, I will be happy. Yes. So moving on, it's what ecstatic, else? Static perhaps. Here? Gotta move on to the um, news. Yeah, yeah, we got we got a little bit less uh we're we get a little bit more things to, to plow through. Uh, December 18th, Dune, right now. Like I said, we'll, we'll keep anyone update, everyone updated if it uh, unfortunately does need to make any sort of moves on that front. Um, on the TV side of things, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is coming back for its seventh and final season in, uh, in just a month's time, uh, more or less. May 27th, it will make its uh, premiere 13-episode season. Um, I don't think that either of us are caught up. Is that correct? No, I left off with the season where we thought it was going to be canceled but it wasn't canceled so they released another season right yeah and then they they basically renewed it for two seasons and like like oh these are going to be the last two so it's on netflix now so we think we can rewatch it um or catch up you know uh, anytime we want i think i will try to catch up probably by by the time this premieres if i had to guess which you know again gives us a month to work with um i don't know how much of the details you want i don't want to spoil too many things for you but um let's yeah, just say that you're worried about me it's just about the listeners yeah well it, it's 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 certainly picking up apparently where season six left off um which i don't know which, where that was <laughs> i don't either so <laughs> um i have an idea just based on kind of announcements that they've made um let's just say that a, uh, Coulson a character colson is evolved in in some capacity i'm not sure exactly or at least clark greg is i'm not sure how they're handling that i, I don't know if it's Colson back at this right. point or, or how, how they're doing dealing with that. But um, I think that it's, it's, it's supposed to involve a character from agent Carter in some capacity, um, which obviously Peggy? doesn't take place in the modern day, not Peggy from what I understand, although maybe she'll pop up. We'll see. Um, but uh, yeah, kind of one of the supporting characters from agent Carter, they announced is going to come back and be involved in some capacity. So I don't know if it's, time travel i don't know if it's flashbacks i don't know if, you how don't know they're handling it show. but there's but no I, i'm there. trying to i have a vague idea of kind of how i think it's going to play out but i'm trying to be intentionally vague as to not spoil you and anyone that's listening that hasn't had a chance to catch uh, up so okay. um so yeah like i said i'll try to catch up on that so that's uh, something to look forward to you know in our uh, dearth of content that we are ex- unfortunately <laughs> experiencing for the most part you know uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., legitimately good. It's not like it's like, oh, great, I have to watch S.H.I.E.L.D. But, you know, it's it's just a, like, it's got oh, good. I do have something though. to look forward to. Certainly. Yeah, that's true. That's definitely true. But, um, uh, you know, last season. I got to I gotta be in for the last season. I, I You know, hopefully it sticks to landing. Um, Solar Opposites coming to Hulu. Another, uh, well, this one actually just 
a Hulu original, not an FX on Hulu original or whatever, you know, the branding is, is saying. It's a Hulu original animated series coming from one half of the creators of Rick and Morty, Justin Roiland, uh, landing on May 8th, another one coming in May. Uh, you had a chance to watch the trailer for this? Yeah. Yeah. What'd you uh, think? It made me laugh. It actually made me actively look fucking Google. Well, and, and I know you're a Rick and Morty fan, so I thought maybe you'd, you'd, you'd yeah. be a little bit more um, interested because of definitely that. Definitely recognize Similar the art, art style. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but the humor the humor is largely the same, too. Um, Which, again, makes sense. There's there's obviously a lot of crossover here in terms of the, the, the creative uh, team behind it, right? You know? Yes. Um, and uh, I don't know. It looks like Rick and Morty... Um, the perspective is interesting, though. I mean, you have these aliens that have crash landed on Earth, and they're like mm-hmm. these fucking people are crazy. Um, and it looks—I don't know—it looks kind of funny. Um, I'll definitely be into watching it. I don't know if I'll grind it out when the moment it comes out, but you know, if yeah. I have fifteen minutes here, twenty minutes here, whatever an episode is, I'll probably hop onto it. Just like, yeah, and- just like Rick and Morty, right? I think. I mean, I, I'm, I can't imagine these episodes being longer than twenty-five minutes, you know, a piece. So. It's probably, you know, good bite-sized entertainment to have. Yeah. Um, yeah. There is also the other bite-sized entertainment in the form of Quibi, but I'll probably stick with this <laughs> for, watch, for now. I'll watch every episode of this before I start Quibi. <laughs> we have to literally run out of every content possible. <laughs> We're going through Tiger King before we go into Quibi. <laughs> <laughs> have you started uh, Quibi? No. <laughs> okay. I have content. Have started, I have plenty of content. Have you started Tiger King? I have not. Like I said, I have plenty of I content. I had one of the so banks I'm not, I'm, I'm, on, on Tiger King. I my, my grandfather started uh, the car lots in Tampa. And apparently, Karen Baskin, I think her name is, or Carol Baskin. Ca- Carol, Carol, yeah. Carol Baskin's husband, original husband, the one that she fed to the Tigers. Allegedly. Uh, uh, made his money from the used car business. Really? Which means he would have started the business in the same... City is my grandfather. Okay. During the same time. Hmm. So it's possible that my grandfather knows Carol Baskin's original husband. But does he know? I never have not asked my is. grandfather. I got I got I got to find out. I haven't watched I don't know anything about Carol Baskin's original husband. But one of the guys at the bank called me and said, "Hey, listen, I just watched the Tiger King." <laughs> Your grandfather started the business. You got to ask him about it. So I got to ask him about it. Apparently, so mm. incredible. Anyway, just incredible. <laughs> Anyways, another trailer. Uh, I guess a teaser trailer. It's still a trailer. Perry Mason uh, coming to HBO June twenty first. Uh, based kind of a, a, a new incarnation of a um, an older series um, following the origins of American fiction's most legendary criminal defense lawyer Perry Mason. Um, do you like this trailer? Did you dislike this trailer? Did you I have thoughts very, on it? I very much like this trailer. I thought this was a very stylish trailer. I thought it looked pretty, pretty excellent. I thought, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, the 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 uh, the set piece or the the period, uh, in yeah. which it's mm-hmm. depicting, um, it seems like it's raw. Uh, the the material seems like it's raw, um, and it seems very compelling, especially um, you know just. Well, you know, it's HBO, so, you know, you kind of know, True Detective Season 2 aside, that it's probably going to be pretty good. It's going to be, yeah, and it's going to be edgy, especially with the way that it looked like they filmed it, with the actors that they have. I saw somewhere that uh, Robert Downey Jr. is associated with this. Uh, he was originally set to star as Perry Mason, but I think uh, scheduling conflicts or something or another forced him to drop out of the project, so Matthew Reese ended up taking over. Um, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, because I, I I thought the same thing too. Because I saw him, I think tweet it um, uh, about like like the teaser, like go check it out. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know he was involved in this. And then I watched it. and I'm like, I don't think he's involved in this. Um, but I I think I think it's he's just kind of just supporting the project from from a place well, where I he obviously like, was interested I at mean, one point. But uh, I, I'm make curious it as to what he's filming that what why, what he would film as to why he would pick the other thing than to this. Sometimes it's sometimes it's not as simple as I want to do the thing. It's, it's just it's as simple as money? I signed the contract for this one first. Fuck, I can't. You know, by the time that this is actually now going into production, I, uh, I can't do it. So that's a real shame. Hopefully, it wasn't. Yeah, any, yeah I don't know. Because I don't looks, know. It, it might have really been something good. else besides literal scheduling conflicts. It, maybe it was creative differences. The oft uh, you know oft quoted uh, creative differences. I really. 
I'm not a hundred percent sure. This shit doesn't get published either, you know, so there's no way to know. Yeah, but yeah. um this one does look good. I'm excited about it. Yeah. Um and yeah, actually I guess uh well, we had a lot of TV news on this episode. I didn't realize, like, basically everything else is TV or streaming, you know, TV-adjacent kind of news. J.J. Uh, Abrams getting busy. No, not that way. Get your head out of the toilet. <laughs> um, uh, HBO Max, uh, which is debuting May 27th, we have just learned, by the way. Um, he is going to be working on three, count them, three series for wow. the uh, HBO Max streaming service, which... To just as a reminder is the kind of combined efforts of HBO and Warner Brothers um, getting in on that streaming game. So three series coming from uh, it's from JJ. Uh, one Produced. is a yeah yeah right you know he's getting to be actually. like a uh, Tarantino or not Tarantino but a uh, um, DL Guillermo del Toro yes kind of yeah sure I'll just put my name sure. on it. Mm-hmm. Anyways, yeah. go ahead. What I do you got? I, like I said, I don't know how involved he's going to be in, in necessarily all of these, but uh, first one's called Duster. Uh, he's going to be co-writing at least okay. part of it. Set in the 1970s Southwest, revolves around the life of a gutsy getaway driver for a growing crime syndicate who goes from awful to wildly, stupidly, dangerously awful. It's an interesting description. Straight yeah. from Hollywood Reporter. Uh, the second one is called Overlook. It is a spinoff of sorts based on the iconic hotel featured in Stephen King's 1977 novel and subsequent 1980 feature, The Shining. Okay. Uh, exploring untold, terrifying stories of the most famous haunted hell in the American fiction, in, in American, not the, just in American fiction, generally speaking. Um, ten episodes, um, and it's being written and produced by some folks that worked on Castle Rock uh, over on Hulu. Um so that's that's one. That's probably going to be sorry. That's, good. that's two. Yeah, it sounds cool. It's, it's a, I think it's a good setting, certainly, and I think you could do a lot with that setting. So I think that's fun. Um, and last but not least, uh, an untitled drama based on characters from the Justice League Dark Universe. Um, <gasps> Does that mean we get a little bit of? Uh, uh, what's his name? There's with the Constantine. Do we get some Constantine? You think? Justice Maybe. League Dark. Typically features magic-based characters such as Zatanna, Dead Man, Swamp Thing, and John Constantine. So I'm um, all about it. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, Constantine is still hanging out over on the Legends uh, TV show. If you ever, if you ever make your way over there, um, he's part of the team now, man. He's part. Of is the he team. really? Yeah, he's. he's, he's he a, still, He's a regular on there. Yeah. Is he? Reg- is he like super edgy and shit? Like smoking I don't cigarettes? Know. I'm, I'm. I'm not that far in my Arrowverse ah, rewatch or, or catching up. So I'm getting there. I've been watching like one episode every two weeks. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> I noticed how we used to get these updates. Went from the the I'm, power I'm, lineup to I'm bringing back the power lineup to now we're just not talking about this shit. <laughs> I, I'm waiting until I'm at at, at, a, at a at a more like like I could be like I've watched an episode. I don't know what to tell you. It's 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 exactly what you expect it to be. <laughs> I'm waiting until I like finish a season of something or something like oh, that. Oh god, not so all talk demoralizing about it. fucking the CW verse. <laughs> But yeah, presumably this will be separated from the CW stuff and, you know, maybe closer to the, maybe this will be connected to the um, movie stuff, which I guess isn't even, it's not necessarily They're more not encouraging, but that shit. yeah, or, or if it's just its own thing, you know, that's, that's cool too. That like do your own version like of Constantine, likely. do your own version of Swamp Thing, even if the DC Universe one was cool or whatever, but yeah. So yeah, so that's what's going on. JJ getting busy. Um. Last but not least for news, um, running a little bit long on news. We had a lot to catch up on, to be fair. A lot of Dune to talk about. Um, fucking Dune, dude. How fucking not Dune, talk exactly. About Dune. Correct. That's the correct take. Um, <laughs> the Mandalorian is getting its own documentary series, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which is apparently going to be oh, Jesus. just as long as the actual series <laughs> was. Fucking stupid. That is stupid. Oh, listen, I like the Mandalorian. That's you know, I don't need fucking eight episodes of, of documentary. What the fuck? Yeah, just give me another season. Well, they are. They're getting you another season theoretically later this year, barring any delays. But um, the fuck, documentary. Yeah, eight eight, eight episode uh, doco on the Mandalorian, Disney Gallery, the Mandalorian. It is as it is being called, uh, coming to Disney Plus on Star Wars Day, May fourth. Um, so. 
And it's going to be hosted by Johnny V, of course. Oh, okay. So, well, then I'm so in. So are, are you sold now? All right, I thought so. If he's I got the goatee so. and maybe the fucking glorious mullet from fucking Iron Man 3, then I'll be in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he probably won't. <laughs> Fuck Johnny V and fucking Iron Man 3 mullet. That shit was off the chain. <laughs> You do seem to have a certain <laughs> fondness for it. <laughs> it's so fucking good. Anyways, I digress. So yeah, um, <laughs> it, it, I, I I thought it was going to be like an episode per episode kind of thing, but apparently, like each episode is like its own kind of concept. Like one hundred one is directing, one hundred two is legacy, one hundred three is cast, one hundred four is technology, and they haven't announced the other ones. But yeah, I don't know. Okay, whatever. I'll fucking watch it. Who cares? <laughs> Disney Plus, Mandalorian. Give it to me. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the, uh, that's the news. Um, lots of news, lots of news, lots of things happening in the world as people are aware. Um, um, but, uh, hopefully people have had a chance to talk about or to, to watch devs so they can hear us talk about it. Uh, cause that's what we're going to do now. Devs is a, uh, eight episode, I assume many series, limited series. I don't know technically how they're billing it created, written and directed by one man, Alex Garland director writer and director let me uh, correct myself writer and director of ex machina of annihilation and now devs um stars sonoya mizuno nick offerman jin ha zach grenier stephen mckinley henderson man we've talked about recently uh kaylee spaney carl glussman and allison pill it's about a c- computer engineer who investigates the secretive development division and her company which she believes is behind the disappearance of her boyfriend so this is one i know as we kind of talked about earlier in the episode, you've been watching it kind of since it started airing. I think Hulu was doing like a weekly drop of this one for the most part. Um, and so I think it's been going on for over a month now. Uh, I think it just, just wrapped up uh, less than a week ago with its final episode. So we're, we're actually relatively timely with this, surprisingly. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I know you've talked about it a couple times, I think, in, in our previous catching up sections. I, I do believe you had some positive things to say about it at the time. And so I ask you now, do you, do you still have a few positive things to say? What's, what's your take on it? I have many Devs. positive things to say about this, about this, uh, this show. All right. Well, let's hear them. Um, we're going to go with, uh, I'm just going to like broad overview. It's hard. It's a def, it's, it's a difficult, it's a show that I don't recommend for everybody. Um, it's a show I think that's, that's totally fair. Yeah. It's a show that's 125% up my fucking alley. Like it's, it's a show that I really like. I, uh, I finished, well, I guess I finished yesterday and I've been wrapping it around, I, you know, th- I've been thinking about it today, but I'm going to be thinking about it tomorrow. And I'm going to be thinking about it. it it's it's a show that you, you think about the concepts more than you may think about the show. Does it make mm-hmm. sense? Um, yeah. It's very thought-evoking. Uh, it's, a, it's a show where the material and the things that it's trying to convey, I think, supersede the medium. And you're no longer thinking about, like, hey, listen, I'm thinking about Nick Offerman's dude, or I'm thinking about this, or I'm thinking about that. I'm thinking about the fucking material. I'm thinking about the the broad sweeps of what it's trying to say. Um, and, and I think that's, that's rare in, in film. I think that's rare in television. I think that's just a rare thing in general. Um, and I think that every time, every time you watch the show, I think you might be able to be able to walk away with a different take on it. Um, it just, it's, it's, (sighs) I don't want to sound like an all Alex Garland fucking fanboy, but I kind of am. Like I think he's genius in like the way he, the way he composes his things. You know, um, the 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 soundtrack in the show was fucking spectacular. Um, the acting, like I'd never seen Nick Offerman. I know he was in that comedy show. Uh, I think it's Parks and Rec. I never watched it. Mm-hmm. Was it Parks right. and Rec? Yeah, Parks and Rec. Yeah, but I never seen him really in anything. But he was fucking aces. Um, Stephen McKinley Henderson was fucking spectacular. Uh, there's a girl that plays a guy, um, mm-hmm. plays a young man. Um, I I don't know the actress's name. Kaylee Spaney. Kaylee Spaney, fucking mm-hmm. spectacular. 
Um, I mean, the cast in general was fucking spectacular. I, I kind of just picked up on some, but it, not to the detriment of others. Like, it's just... I really I really ate the show up. And like I said, I might be biased because it's my stuff. Like, Sarah didn't want to watch it with me because it just seemed weird. Listen, I get it. You know, it's a weird show. Um, but I think if... I really think if you give it some time and you really like if you watch the first two episodes, like if you watch the pilot and you in you don't quite understand it, but you just stayed on it and you really put it in your mind to think about it and just kind of let the ideas of what it's trying to say swell up in your mind. I think that given the time to just state, I think watching episode two after, I think if you really put forth the effort, if you're not, if you're not like predisposed to this kind of stuff, I think that given the appropriate effort and time, you can really gestate on the material and I think you'll be better for it. Um, because it, it really is saying some really potent stuff. And I think it's stuff worth thinking about, like, you know, just in general, um, spectacular fucking show. I, I ate it up, but with a caveat, I understand, like, I, I, I can see the flaws in it. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not just so up Alex Garland's ass to where I, I don't see flaws. Like I can see, I can see things to where people wouldn't identify with characters or, or I don't, I don't quite get this or that. And I don't quite get this or that, you know, on the initial viewing, I think I would get more on a second viewing. Um, but I think it's better for it. Uh, I think it makes it a, a much more complex piece and, um, 110 percent all about it just blew me away um and i wish that i watched it an episode a day i didn't get to watch it an episode a day i had to watch it over the span of like three or four weeks which which kind of made it more difficult to i don't know just made it more difficult to follow um yeah certainly like i could see that but anyways yeah becoming um, an issue what's your uh what's your take on it i was long-winded um, well, I, I I don't have my phone in front of me, but I believe I sent you a text after I'd watched the first two episodes, and I think that you said like essentially, less, um, um, let's record on this. <laughs> yeah, basically, because we were kind of like tinkering with like, well, what do, what do we what are we going to talk about on the next episode that we do? And uh, I think I think we talked about maybe doing Tales from the Loop, the Amazon show, and I I, I was interested in devs. I know you'd watched at least part of Here it. Goes. I figured, well. It just logistically be easier because you're basically halfway done with the show. Two and episodes into devs, think it's safe to say I'm okay with making it our next episode if you are. Yep. Yep. And uh, and so uh, eight episodes completed in. Uh, I, I, I still kind of, I, I, I feel the same way. Um, it's a show that starts really strong. It ends really strong. Um, I think that the middle is good without being great i think overall that's kind of where probably the the, the the biggest of my complaints come in is that i kind of I, I thought that it lost a little bit of its magic in the middle it kind of seemed like it was it turns almost, into logistics almost you know like yeah like there's even kind of an episode where they kind of like explain everything to the main character and it's kind of just like we know this information like we understand that the main character doesn't know this information, but it kind of, it kind of, you know, affects the pacing of the show a little bit. Um, but it's minor complaints. I think overall, I think really, again, like it started so strong that it hooked me. And then by the end, it, I was totally sold. Like it really, really stuck the landing. And as we have learned from, from shows and movies, sometimes it's, even if you start great, sometimes it's hard to stick that landing. Uh, and, and, and if you don't, it really kind of, it really kind of spoils the whole experience sometimes. Um, and that was absolutely not the case here, which was, which was very gratifying. Um, I obviously granted, I, you know, I watched it in a relatively compressed time frame for the purposes of recording and talking about it, but also just because it was gripping and it was interesting and the concepts that it plays with are very cool and sometimes out there, certainly above my head at times. Um, but you know, that's, that's kind of Alex Garland in a nutshell, right? Is like kind of take these weird out there kind of things and then really make them kind of work and approachable in some respects. Um, yeah. And, and I, I guess probably to piggyback off of what you said, 
this is not a show for everyone. I, I fully concede that as well. Um, but I think that there's an easy litmus test that you can have, and it's called Watch Ex Machina and Watch Annihilation. And I think your opinions on that will probably inform your expectations for this. Yeah, that's that's maybe fair. maybe maybe Ex Machina just more ex, so. I, I think, think that, just Ex Machina really. Yeah, I think Ex Machina because I think it's pretty closely tied in terms of kind of content um, to this one. I think that it could certainly. I really I think feel it, like they could be set in the same universe. Oh, for sure. It it, it feels like it could be the same universe, um, and I, I I think that just almost everything is kind of just structurally thematically similar enough that if that's for you, then this is probably also for you. And it's a long form version of that telling a different story, but something that's kind of, I don't know, even like the main kind of the thrust of it, like what even is like, what is devs and like kind of the way that we get introduced to devs is, is kind of very similar in terms of the story concept. Um, so it's got some similarities without feeling like a copy. Obviously, it's it's a very much the, its own thing. But. Remind me, remind me to bring this up. But the article you sent me kind of delved on that. Okay, so we'll Sounds talk good. about it. Yeah, yeah. So just just to just to flag our listeners, we uh, uh, Alex Garland did an interview with I think Rolling Stone after the finale. So I think there's a lot of interesting kind of bites, uh, you know, information uh, in that article that we'll probably talk about in spoilers. Um, but uh, not yet. We're not there yet. Um, there's a lot that stands out to me about it. The visual design of this show is is obviously very, it, it, again, very emblematic of of Garland's previous work with both Ex Machina and Annihilation, which were both beautiful films. This is a beautiful, beautiful television show. The sets are awesome. the 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 architecture of like the devs' compound is fucking cool. Um, yeah. it's just really, really beautiful. It's really, I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's just cool to look at. And this show is 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 a beautifully constructed show in the sense that the cinematography feels cinematic. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, for sure. It, it 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 feels like a like a kind of long form film. You know, like it doesn't feel it doesn't feel like it had a low budget. It feels like it really kind of maximized everything that it had available to it, um, and 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 puts That's, you in interesting I, settings, film them in interesting ways. I mean, there's this kind of the big statue of, of you know, at the Amaya um, headquarters, which is such a, like you see it in every episode, like, you know, it just kind of always pops up, just kind of like give you like a reminder of like what the atmosphere is in this show. And it, and it always kind of gives you that um, kind of grounding, which is really cool and interesting how they, how they did that. A um, lot of, a lot of stuff with San Francisco. Um, to just, just even, even like the real world kind of, you know, visions that we see you know the the the, the, the scenery things, that we the see we know. right yeah it's still just exceptionally well shot um and so it's it's it, it's a turn it's a turn the sound off and it looks pretty and you're going to enjoy it i think in some ways for that however don't do that because the score is amazing throughout the series um it's the same composers that worked on both ex machina and annihilation and were spectacular there I, I remember liking the score in ex machina but i couldn't think about it um, like if you asked me to like talk about it off the top of my head, I would be unable to do so. However, I would not be able to say the same of Annihilation. And I got a lot of Annihilation vibes uh, at certain points throughout this series, which is probably similar to what we got in Ex Machina. And I just haven't seen it in some time. Probably. It's kind of like otherworldly and intense. That's the way I would yeah. describe it. You know, it's but just... it really, really does a great job um, of setting the tone and feel of, of the, of the series and, and kind of, you know, playing an integral role and, and the viewing experience of it, um, I would say. And then, then, yeah, the performances across the board, um, Nick Offerman was a standout for me. I think overall, I have seen Parks and Rec, didn't finish it to be fair, but he plays an extremely different character, uh, in Parks and Rec than he does here when he's playing Forrest. And I found Forrest, to probably be the most compelling character in the entire show. Um, obviously not the best dude per se, but like it, it, he was just an interesting character. And I, and I found myself always kind of gravitating towards. It's just I guess, interesting. He's dogmatic. It's just, and just it's interesting. Cool. I, and, and I guess, I guess what I can say, at least in terms of, again, I think kind of how how the show kind of maybe falters a little bit, not a lot, a little bit in kind of the middle section is there's really kind of two distinct storylines that happen for most of the show. And then they eventually converge as things are wont to do. And that's 
the devs storyline, which mar- largely centers around Nick Offerman's character. And then there's Lily's storyline, which is Sonia Mizuno's character. And like they entangle at some point and, and, it, and it pays off, as I said. Um, but it, it, one of those threads I found infinitely more interesting than the other until they kind of came together. I was finding myself gripped by the devs stuff and losing it a little of bit with, with the Lily stuff just cause it just, it just, it felt the sometimes derivative far- of other shows, other better shows. And like, and then like the dev stuff was like, that's what this show is called. Infinitely like, this more is, interesting. This is, this is just like, I haven't seen this before. I've seen the other thing many times before. I haven't seen this before. And, mm-hmm. you know, so just the novelty of it really is kind of what, like, was really driving my interest in this show. But I, again, I think once it kind of, once it consolidated things and, and, and kind of brought everything back together, it did it in a really satisfactory manner. And so that was really cool to see. Um, yeah, I, I and I, like I said, I think across the board, the acting is, is, is pretty good. Sometimes the dialogue's a little spotty here and there. Like, I think, Garland was trying to go for a naturalistic kind of feel sometimes, but sometimes it felt a little scripted and, and like, uh, I think mostly with the main character and, uh, her, her ex-boyfriend, I kind of felt like sometimes their interactions were a little, I don't know. It just it didn't, it didn't, didn't seem natural. Right. And then like, you know, and, and some, t- and show, and some shows that could be a hint of like, well, maybe that's for a reason, but in here it kind of just felt like, I don't know. That line probably worked as written, but it didn't work as delivered, you know? Um, but again, that was just, just things that kind of stood out to me. I've just, I don't know. It's eight episodes. I think it could have been condensed to, to, to anywhere from six. four to six. Yeah. And, and I think that it probably could have benefited from, from a little bit of tightening and a little bit of restructuring to, to kind of make it the perfect package. It's not without but it's, flaws. It's, but... it's pretty, it's pretty damn close to being, um, I don't want to say perfect, but it's it's really really compelling show with really really compelling ideas, compelling performances. I think it's it's a hair away from being like Chernobyl level content. I don't mm-hmm. think it's quite at that level for me. I think it has enough flaws that I noticed within it to to say no. As much as I really really fucking like this show, I'm not going to put it on this pedestal and be like, I don't care who the fuck you are, watch the show. Right. Like, I I I think it's still fair to have that caveat of. It's not for everybody. I, I don't think this show is going to overcome the the, the 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 inherent barriers of if this is not anything that you're going to be interested in, like don't fucking bother. Like seriously, it's not it's not it's not to be condescending about it. It's not. It's just that I think this show is just kind of naturally designed for a very specific type of audience, and that's okay. Like if you're not part of the audience, like don't feel left out. You're not going to get enjoyment out of it. You're not going to be losing something by not watching it. Um, might just be a frustrating experience for you, but I think if you're, again, I a think fan there of is Alex something Garland, to be gained, though. I really do feel like there's something to yeah, be gained, maybe, maybe, to just watching it and thinking about it. Like I, th- I would agree. The, the, I, con- I mean, the concepts in this in the show, I was almost said film. The concepts are just they're they're where, where would you where would you really dive into the concepts of the show, other than something like the show? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You know, it's stuff that's being discussed right now in, in physics and everything else. I mean, it's it's topical. I mean, the, the concepts are topical things, whether you want to admit it or not. I mean, the quantum computers, the the concepts of, of multiple fucking worlds and shit. This is topical shit that people are talking about. Um, and, I mean, if you're not going to, you're certainly not going to read about it in fucking Wikipedia. Like, I mean, I, I read about it in Wikipedia before the show came out, you know, but... The vast majority of people aren't fucking reading about it. Yeah, this is kind of an interesting mechanism to distill it for a wider audience. Correct, yeah. Because so. otherwise people aren't going to, you know, yeah, they're not going to be reading Wikipedia about it or, or anything else about it. We're watching TED Talks and stuff like that. So Yeah, you know, so I mean, if, if, if this is where, if this is how you're introduced to something, I think that's fucking huge. Like, take yeah, the time and, and take the time and, 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 and. It's it's not without its flaws. Like I mean, there are pacing issues, um, but overall, it's it's a very thought evoking thing that I think is worth thinking about. And um, and 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 you know, the bottom line is, it is it's only eight episodes still. That's even it. even if it does seem like it could have been shorter, like it is still pretty short in the scheme of things. It's totally fucking totally doable. Yeah, right. You know. <laughs> so I mean, you could you could you could watch this in a day, technically speaking. So. Um, 
I don't know if I would encourage that. I think I think that would that be, be an unhealthy. overwhelming <laughs> amount of information to absorb in a, in, in a one day span. But <laughs> one a um, day. That's my recommendation. One a day. Yeah, for sure. Well, recommendation. You said it. You want to you want to go ahead and give an official recommendation? I do. On, on, uh, on the it does. Podcast? It does have its flaws. Uh, but as far as being one hundred percent unique. Uh, and delivering, um, I, I really felt like it really delivered on what it intended to deliver. Uh, there are small pacing issues, but I don't think it was enough to bring it down a whole lot. Um, yeah. So I would say it's a very yes show for me. It's a um, very yes show. Okay. Under right. the caveat that I understand that, I understand if it's not for you, but right. I still I still think that I, I still think it's a very yes show. Yeah, I stand behind okay. that hundred percent. And, and and just to clarify for our listeners that are maybe tuning in for the first time, maybe, you never know. Uh, very yes is the is the most generous we can be in terms of rating TV shows. So if, if we say it's a very yes show, you, you, know, you best perk up and, and maybe, maybe take notice. Um, I myself was leaning towards yes, uh, a yes show uh, until the last couple episodes and it pumped it back into very yes tier for me. Um, it really, really stuck the landing for me. I was very happy about that because, again, like I said it, it it sucked me in. I was enjoying it with like kind of like, all right, where's this going? Let's 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 get to the, to the you know to the ending, and then by the ending, I'm just like, yep, I'm back in. I'm 100 percent back yeah. in. So I, I'm also going to give it a very yes. I think that it's it's not that the middle is bad. I just think it's worse than the beginning and the end. But the beginning and the end are so damn good that like that alone is is in you know it's enough for me it's it's just, it's a super interesting compelling show um so yeah very yes for me hot dog we're on the same we're on the same page we are on the same page all right well, we got lots to talk about in spoilers i think so why don't we go ahead and do full spoilers for devs or should i say Deus. yeah so uh i'll kick this off because i still remember the point that i wanted to talk about um so you have ex machina which is, I think, uh, Latin from from the machine, from the machine. I think right. Uh, so uh, an uh, ex of machina of the machine. That's it. Oh, the machine. Uh huh. Um, you have a man who who believes himself to be of God, like he is. He has transcended like humanity. He has created life, and that makes him godlike. In this show, and I read this in an article. I don't want to. I can't remember. I can't remember what article it came from. But what this show be called? Be, it's called uh, Devs, which the V is supposed to be Latin for you, which is Deus, apparently from the finale. Um, and you combine those two shows together, Deus ex, ex Machina, which is God of the Machine. Um, mm-hmm. In this particular show, man did not believe himself to be God. Man created God. Man created the existence of everything. And, and and within that existence, you had Pandora's box, right? And that's something else that I found super interesting. I'm getting goosebumps talking about it, dude. I got really <laughs> pumped up about this fucking show. You had What's Face standing on the outside there on the season finale. Um, uh, I can't remember his name in the show. Uh, Stephen McKinley Henderson. Um, and he's out there reciting. Uh, Stuart. 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 You had Stuart out there leaning against the wall for like two episodes. Like he's fucking dumbfounded. Yeah, he's he's mm-hmm. God struck, right? And he's out there and he's reciting. I don't know what he was reciting. Um, but at some Shakespeare. point. It was Shakespeare? I think so. Isn't that what? Well, it, Kate- it was either Shakespeare or it was. It was uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what he was reciting. Either way, he was out there talking about how everything's in the box. Everything's in mm-hmm. the box. And then within that box, there's another box. You know, and, and, and ad nauseum, forever. Um, there, 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 there's boxes within boxes. It's almost like fucking Pandora's box. They open Pandora's box and they can't fucking close it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and anyway, so it was interesting. Has that, science gone too far? And that's just it. So this is a super fucking interesting thing. It's a super interesting concept because, like I said, the 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 other show Ex Machina, you have man who created artificial intelligence, he created life. Does that does that make him God, right? And in this mm-hmm. one, they were able to tap into the chemistry of the fucking universe, and they were able to see God. They created God, and then within it, they were able to exist within it. Right by the end of the show, um, and it's 
fucking cool, man. It's just cool to, it's cool to watch something. Yeah. Very seldom do you get something that you can watch or do you read or whatever. And for days on days, you can just fucking, like, if it were to happen, what does it mean? Like, what does that mean for, for people? Because, I, I mean, does it go without standing that if we create, we have created quantum computers, things can exist and not exist at the same time with a quantum computer, right? It's not, mm-hmm. I don't think it's unreal. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's fucking super far-fetched, but it's not far-fetched to think about. Like, if we are able to create something like this, what does that mean? I don't know. And what's it I mean, mean? What's it mean from that? Not only does it, what does it mean to look, look into the past, but what's it mean to look into the future? Because then you have the whole Lily situation to where right. she thought she were cha- she thought she was changing things by throwing the gun into the fucking chamber, but ultimately, ultimately, uh, Stephen, is that his name? Uh, Stuart. Stuart. Stuart fucking. Stephen is the, the actor's name. Uh, Stuart put pushed the fucking button. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, it was the same result. The fucking thing went down. Right. 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 So, did she change anything? It. It's well, crazy. One other thing is, you know, he's sitting there talking. He's sit, you know, he's saying, "Listen, I can, I can try to compel you to, to, to change your mind. I can explain everything to you." They're in the season finale. You know, they're sitting on the bench, and he's like, "I can try to, I can try to tell you that I don't want to show you everything, but it won't change anything, mm-hmm. right?" But in him doing that, he's changing the cycle. It's fucking. It's a paradox. It's weird. It's weird to really fucking think about it. Fucking zoinks your brain a little bit. Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of like kind of uh, not even techno babble, but like, you know, there's just dialogue in this show that like I'm like I'm not really fully grasping everything that I'm being told right now, I'm being honest. Like but it's still interesting to like to parse what you can out of it, you know? I mean, so, you know, the, I guess isn't isn't kind of like maybe I miss maybe I fundamentally misunderstood the show. We shall see momentarily, but Force is is so dead set on this deterministic viewpoint of the world. Maybe to, abs- I guess effectively to absolve himself of any guilt for, for the, you know, the death of his wife and daughter. But, you know, he's so diametrically opposed to this many worlds theory that kind of ultimately seems to be kind of the case at the end, by the end. Is that, I mean, like, but like, you know, the show is kind of, is this a deterministic, you know, world? Um, do we really have free will? Do we have the ability to make choices? Is everything cause and effect? Um, you know, like, I, I kind of feel like the, the show grapples was... with kind of that. And I, and I kind of felt like by the end, it kind of gave the answer of, well, it's not quite that simple. But maybe I maybe I was misreading that a little bit. I don't know. I think, um, yeah, because he couldn't make the machine work based on his principles. Right, and like like the only way that they did actually get those super crystal clear images was to use the you know, and they just the happened to, that he they happened to, to they happened to hunker down on the world that they wanted to see. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But then once they hunkered down on the world they wanted to see, it was broken again, and it was split again. You know, so um, it is, but it isn't. I guess I don't know. You know, I haven't quite figured that part out. Yeah. I just kind of seemed like that was like because by the end he admits in the back on the back end of the show like once he exists Mm -hmm. within the machine he admits that like to Lily you know there's some worlds here where where you're existing in absolute hell but in this world everything seemed to work out you know what I mean so it's it's I don't know it's a it's a real mind fuck and that might be for sure that might be my that might be plot holes to where Alex Garland didn't quite understand everything. Or it could be just thought invoking shit to where we really have to sit down and think about it. But I really think that that's what makes, um, I don't know, I think it makes for good art, you know? Yeah, I think so too. Like, it, it, it's a good way, you know, it's kind of what we were talking about earlier of like, hey, there's kind of these ideas of quantum mechanics and uh, determinism and uh, a multi world theory. And like, like, these are just kind of interesting, kind of like, you know, out there concepts that we want to talk about. We like, we want to make a, we want to craft a story around that and, you know, and, and create a narrative around it. And so even if it's not something that 
we really fully grasp or understand or give like a definitive answer to like it's still interesting to kind of go through the 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 narrative to have that kind of brought to your attention to kind of have these characters kind of deal with that i I guess i just kind of interpret it in the sense of like forced by the end is kind of having to reconcile the fact that like he was kind of wrong but he can still have a piece of sorts at the end even if it means that he can be blamed for what happened that has as he experienced you know well, reality see i don't know if i i i kind of took from it like a more religious kind of thing you know mm-hmm. like uh like forrest is 100 110 percent devout to his religion which is that machine mm-hmm. right and and even though lily broke that machine he was able to warp his sense of viewpoint to where he he was able to get what he wanted from that so he found gratification in his god which is the machine Right, he named it Deus, uh, which is God essentially, um, and 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 by the end of it, he was resurrected. He was resurrected within his God, and given what he was promised, which is which which is, was his daughter. Right, mm-hmm. even though, even though, his viewpoint was fundamentally fucked up because she threw the gun in the thing. Right. Yeah, that threw a, a wrench into basically. Everything right. that he like, they were just just everybody their minds was were blown in that moment. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, they were wrong, but he was right. he was able to he was able to he was able to shift his point of view to where he was still right. You know what I mean? And 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 to where it's it's a weird thing. You know, it's all about perspective. I guess I don't yeah. know. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, so I mean. That's pretty much it. I mean, I don't know. There's you have a lot well, of like, I think, the I motifs. Think, I, Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was just to say. I mean, I kind of feel like that's kind of a like a kind of top down viewpoint of all right, what the fuck is going on in this show, kind of thing. But I think there's a lot of interesting kind of um, moment to moment kind of things throughout characters and stuff like that um, that that are kind of lost in the in, in if you're just kind of talking more broadly about the show. Um, and and so I mean like. I, I guess, you know, to, to kind of talk about maybe the kind of the two distinct storylines that we kind of had, like, you know, we talked about Forrest and again, just a compelling character and an, and an amazing performance by, by Nick Offerman. But I, I really, I felt like that one episode where they did, it's basically just Katie watching everyone's backstory on, you know, through devs was actually like an interesting kind of way of using the kind of premise of the of the show to give a little bit more depth to a lot of these characters um and so i really 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 liked that because even though like basically like from you know from the get-go um what's the boyfriend the the first boyfriend sergey you know sergey is kind of like you know that's how you kind of experience devs initially and you don't really know what devs is and i like that they didn't fuck around too much in terms of kind of telling you what devs is like it wasn't like a watch seven episodes and then this is it like it 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 really kind of doesn't hide it too too much no. like other than maybe the first episode um and he doesn't fully explain but he you was know so exactly what it, it is right but, but yeah um i i guess you know just just Sergey's Sergey's just it's just an interesting kind of way that the 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 story kind of unfolds for for Lily particularly because of her connection to these two characters but I I think that the way that it kind of has these distinct storylines where Sergey gets it his death basically sparks this mystery kind of um you know traumatic kind of storyline for Lily to kind of try to unravel what the hell happened to him uh, what the hell devs is and stuff like that and there's just there's a, there's some good moments throughout that um i liked i like kenton as as a kind of a character kenton was um, awesome i really like kenton um but it it just it i guess it, it's just so interesting like i guess the show just didn't like for a lot of a lot of ways it didn't go the way i expected to which is you know obviously refreshing um typically speaking but like like it seemed like in the beginning, my impression of devs was like, this is a well-oiled machine and like Amaya, like is just like this immense tech company with so much money and, you know, and vulnerability that like they can do whatever the fuck they want. They can make this guy disappear and so be it. But like the kind of the, 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 the divergence that happens between Kenton and, 
and Forrest and company. Like, I didn't see that coming. I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, and and just there's just angles like like I, I and I kind of tried to follow some of like the online discussion like episode to episode where people were like, all right, what's Lily's bigger game? Is like, is she also a spy? Like, what's what's she doing? Like, is she two steps ahead of the game? And I don't know. There was just a lot of kind of things that like. I feel like Alex Garland put kind of some pieces on the board and kind of went the other way with them. And I, and I enjoyed kind of how that kind of like the fucking homeless dude being a Russian spy. Right. That was, that was something where like, this guy's like a really kind of prominent character throughout most of the show. And like, why is this guy getting so much screen time? Like, you know, like, and, and, you know, it ends up, and ends up kind of having a purpose by the end of literally saving our main character from never from saw it death, coming. So. man. Yeah, I just thought it was odd, like how much screen time he had. So I was kind of like, "What's what's the angle here?" Um, I think I I guess there's a couple times. I, th- I think if I'm trying to think of like specific moments, there's there's the there's the episode where I think it's maybe the third episode where Lily is kind of faking the psychiatric history, and she has like the episode in Kenton's office, and I was just like, "What is this show becoming?" Like right, and I was right. just like, like this is coming out of nowhere, and I'm like, this just feels like bad writing to me. And then you know you get the kind of the episode reveal of like, no, no, she's full of shit. She's playing an angle, and I'm like, okay, cool, all right. I bought into it. I didn't understand it, but I respect <laughs> it now. And I and I thought that was kind of like a good way of like writing the the narrative in a way that's unexpected and like when it when you can under when you can recognize that like it feels odd it, it gives that kind of explanation for it and i think the show does a good job overall of giving you kind of some explanation here and that of of of, of certain things i think if there's one like kind of white one weak thing that i don't really feel like like it almost feels like a justification for the homeless guy i just didn't think that the spy stuff with sergey worked for me overall like it kind of felt like it was like something just angle. to push it off right I just kind of, I don't know, I just didn't, like, it it worked to make, I guess, Kenton more of a physical threat, as we kind of see with that confrontation with, like, the Russian guy in the the second episode, but I kind of felt like that was, like, a out of nowhere, and then it kind of disappeared, and again, it's just one of those things, as I was talking about, like, there's parts of this show that are just infinitely more interesting than others, and that was, again, like, how many spy shows do we have? You know, how many times have we seen this kind of thing played out? And I'm glad that it it basically kind of didn't become the focus. And I thought that was nice, but it just kind of felt like an unnecessary sideshow for for the most part, other than maybe to, again, justify how Lily gets out of that situation at the end. But, um, yeah, um, there's a lot, lot obviously, that we're not talking about because there's a lot to unpack with this show, having literally just finished it. Earlier today, there's obviously just inherently going to be things that I don't fully grasp, don't fully understand things. I don't remember about the show. Obviously you watched it over a period of time. So there's certainly early episodes that are probably kind of blurs for you at this point too, if I had to guess, oh, but, sure. but yeah, um, it's just a super interesting show. There's just, I don't know. It's, it's one, I think for sure that it, it's going to stew. Um, and I'm going to think about it for, for a good while. And I guess if nothing else, um, as maybe kind of the last thing that I would like to say is it just to kind of reinforce the fact that like, man, I really, really liked the ending. I, I found Forrest again, even though he was the CEO of this kind of omnipotent kind of tech company and, you know, Sergey tries to steal, you know, secrets for the Russians shitty thing to do and then basically like like Forrest is not like really painted as like a, as a sympathetic character I don't think from the get go like you know and, and even in, even by the end there's parts of him where he is kind of like he's callous you know at times he's just kind of standoffish and, and I guess matter of fact in some ways and you know but like I think by the virtue of getting that backstory of him and spending a lot of time with him like you really do see his his perspective, you feel kind of his pain at times. And I, I I didn't think that like him having a happy ending of sorts of sorts again, like he was kind of proven wrong on his one thing. So the fact that he decided to call his, you know, wife 30 seconds before she was going to be home instead of just waiting. If he hadn't done that, maybe she doesn't get into the fatal accident with her daughter, you know, type thing. Even, even though he doesn't totally get absolved of like, the one thing that really kind of fucks his life up in the major way. I kind of felt like the tragedy of his situation 
and the kind of the just just kind of the the magneticness of that character. Like I kind of felt like when he got integrated into the system, I was just like, cool. Like this is this is still satisfying. It was satisfying for me anyway. I don't know. I don't know if you feel the same way. Sure. But. No, definitely. And for Lily, obviously, who is not you know a bad person, certainly, and and it, it's just an interesting kind of thing how she breaks devs in, in its own sort of way and, and kind of evolves into this just thought invoking messiah like oh, character yeah it's cool I, I gotta say like just the technology itself just so cool like and you know the way that they used it at certain times like especially when you see jesus on the cross like that like i think they start an episode kind of with yeah, like that and i'm totally just like do. that's fucking cool like it was just cool and to see and, and the way that like they progressed the the the, the advancements like the advancements of the technology yeah. within the series where it's kind of you know static images and then it's audio crystal images and then aud- yeah audio first right yeah and then like i don't know it's just cool it was just cool to see how it all kind of unfolded and then led to kind of the ending where you have a full working simulation of 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 real life it was cool it was just really interesting stuff yeah thought provoking stuff certainly um, any other thoughts? No, that's it, dude. It's good stuff. I want to hear what you've been up to. Because uh, I'm looking at the script here, and it looks like you've been up to a lot. I have been up to many of things. Um, however, I have not been up to many of things alone. Oh. Um, I, I think that it is fair that I should bring in a guest into the fold right now. Uh, and that guest would be Anna Mattis, who has been... Uh, watching many things with me. Um, and so I think that it's fair if we have a little perspective that's not just my own. So <laughs> so first thing up, uh, we we watched the full extended edition of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I talked about Fellowship last episode. You watched um, all three? We, we, we watched all of them. Extended Holy editions, shit. all 11 plus hours. We've been through them all. Had she seen them um, before? Yes, uh, she has seen them more times than me, and uh, well, I, I don't need to keep talking. Uh, we can we can just ask her, uh, Anna. How many times would you say that you've seen Lord of the Rings uh, extended or otherwise? I've probably seen theatrical once and extended at least ten times. Hold on a second. Now this is Anna's first time on the podcast. Anna, it's important that you introduce yourself. Oh God. So coming from us live from up in the great white north during the great pandemic, we have Anna Mattis. Who are you and what are you about? It me. I'm only here because of the Rona. Um, <laughs> I don't. I'm Anna. That's what I That's got. you. What else do I say? I think I think you've covered it quite nicely, if I do say so myself. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, lots, lots of, lots of Lord of the Rings coverage, uh, or, or, or viewings. Um, so. Which is your favorite? What's the favorite? What's the, uh. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's get into it. Lord of the Rings. I mean, Andrew, you watched them pretty recently, right? No, no, I haven't seen them in a long time. I tried I to show them like, I well, thought you watched them last year sometime. I tried, mean, I, I consider that pretty recently. Try to show them to Sarah. Uh, she, oh. uh, she fell asleep before the hobbits left the, uh, the. I was just going to say, did she fall asleep? Yeah, she fell asleep before the hobbits left the uh, the 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 fucking Shire. Um, well, the beautiful thing about Fellowship is it's so light that you could watch it during the day. That's true. Um, you know, I just uh, when she fell asleep in the Shire, I can't fall asleep during the Shire just based off the fucking score alone. I mean, the score during the fucking Shire just makes me so fucking happy. I feel like the happiest goddamn person on the face of the earth listening to that score. Um, and I definitely own that score from like literally paid money for it from iTunes. That's so awesome. That. Yeah, it's great. It's fantastic. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, when she fell asleep, I just kind of didn't dig it up again. So I haven't seen it in quite some time. Um, I would wholeheartedly say that Fellowship is my favorite, though. I think I, I think it's my favorite. Yeah, I think I think we agree with that. I we had talked about rankings and i think fellowship absolutely i I think fellowship is i tend to distinguish things of what do i think the best is and what my favorite is and i think fellowship is both i think it's my favorite and it's the best i think it's the best of the three i think as a whole i mean obviously return is like a 
you know, it wraps it up. It's, you know, it's great and they're all great standalone, but I just feel like Fellowship is is the most satisfying to watch. I think so. Yeah, I'd agree with that 100%. I need to rewatch them on the old lids. Be good in the living rooms. Yeah, well, we, we obviously found ourselves with a lot of free time on our hands, so uh, it, it, it kind of ended up being the right occasion. I think Anna tries to rewatch them pretty much every year, though, so she has certainly outpaced my viewing experience by, by quite a lot at this point. Um, but yeah, I co-sign. Fellowship is my favorite. I also agree that it's the best. I I just I I really like Lord of the Rings and like the Fellowship is the, is the one that like I remember the most about. I think I've probably seen it the most and and it was interesting, you know, rewatching Two Towers and Return for me, where like there's just moments that I just didn't remember. I think maybe I've only seen the Extendeds a couple times and maybe that's why I didn't quite remember everything that happened. But I mean, Anna literally knew. You know, because because the Blu-ray has the disc swap thing, uh, even with the extended editions, like it. You knew when to get up, and and she knew like where the disc swap happened. It was consistent with the DVDs, to be fair. So it, like they haven't changed that. But I was just I was like blown away. I'm like, how do you know this? You know, kind of kind of. I don't of know thing. if I have the extendeds. Um, but uh, yeah, so so Lord of the Rings is, is something we up went up to. Maybe Wait, we, we need do to a go back. Episode. That. You don't have the extendeds. I don't know if I do or not. I know I have a Blu-ray set of of the show but or the movies, but I don't know if... I don't know where it's at either, so I don't know. <laughs> Let's get back with you on that. <laughs> I thought it was here on my desk, but it's not. Yeah, I have to get back with you on that. Um, but maybe we could do a bonus episode on... I mean, if anything's going to be worthy of a bonus episode, I feel like Lord of the Rings Extended Editions would be a worthy worthy cause and maybe we could maybe i can get sarah to stay awake through uh you know four hours of movie each movie and uh maybe we could do like a little double doubles it's almost like a double doubles date but it's like a double don't, doubles don't ever double say doubles. that again and what double I'll doubles agree. oh everybody likes a double doubles i don't like a double <laughs> doubles anyways what else have you guys been up to uh another another thing that um Colton had had clearly seen the unofficial extended version of which is just watching the deleted scenes and not realizing that's not the actual movie is Titanic because somebody thought that the alternate ending which is trash was the real ending. <laughs> what? All right. So I don't know anything about right, any let's, of this. Let's let's add some backstory here. I feel like we're we're just going off in the deep end here. I was just looking for an opportunity to tell him I told you so. <laughs> I have maintained for many years of my life that I don't like Titanic as a film. I mean, like a little bit of crow. Regular, just like the regular Titanic? I I think that it's... Yeah, I mean... Like I, they I, could have alternated people on the fucking door at the end? Is that what you're saying? Or Mythbusters did that. Um... No, not not that. <laughs> myth bus, so, myth all right. So, it was the last time you saw Titanic? Again, I'll I'll, I'll it's been a this long conversation. Time. Yeah. So, it's the I first was, movie. It was the first movie I seen boobs in. <laughs> I will classic, say that. <laughs> classic, classic memory. So you'll never forget is what you're saying. <laughs> never um, forget it at all. Uh, yeah. So I don't think I'd seen Titanic in, in, since I was probably a teenager. So it's clearly been it's been at least a decade. I would say probably closer to fifteen or twenty years since I'd actually seen it. When I was young, I thought it was long, bloated. And I think that some of those concerns are still somewhat valid. However, I think that it's a really well-made film with a pretty compelling storyline and one that is kind of an interesting blend of genres of romance and then action slash horror type uh, kind of feel towards it uh, towards the end. But um, what Anna was saying is the movie kind of has bookends um, with kind of an older rose that we kind of you know you kind of see the movie and i remember yeah, 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 i remember yeah. that being a thing she lost her necklace or some shit right well or did she where'd it go well, well let's find out watch the movie <laughs> that's three that's hours that's later that's you'll that's you'll know the answer you'll know where it went um but um big blue son of a bitch big blue thing <laughs> yeah big correct. blue heart thing that's definitely yeah, I correct remember. a little bit yeah yeah Is it, well you know that obviously I, I can't I can't pinpoint why, but certainly it seems to be uh, trapped in your memory for some reason. But um, but yeah, there's there's an ending sequence where uh, it's pretty short. It's pretty like it's a good kind of moment that 
ties together kind of the, the, the flashbacks that we've seen of the entire movie. And um, it does a really good job of kind of wrapping the movie together. But there's an alternate ending, which I had seen on YouTube probably more recently, probably within the past couple of years. And it is poorly acted, poorly directed, poorly written. It is one of the worst things I've ever seen. It honestly makes me question whether anything that James Cameron has ever done has been a fluke. It is that bad. <laughs> and I, I I, guess I thought that, like, I, because it was, I'd seen it more recently, I thought maybe, like, is, is this how that's how the movie ended and so i think that's always kind of colored my impression of it like again I, I i will add the caveat of i don't i think even prior to seeing that i didn't love the film i think just because you know my just attention span saying? when i was young was probably not great um and you know romance is icky and stuff like that but i i i, I yeah i i I'm, I'm going back i said I'm, I'm eating crow and i'm saying it's a pretty good movie it's not my favorite, but it's pretty good. The, the, they had the violins playing the music as the boat was going down, right? Like yes. they're just sinking, playing the violin. Yes. Mm-hmm. Near my people. God to thee. Um, I I will. I, I I guess that's valid. If you're younger and you don't have the attention span, and you're like <laughs> romance icky, all I like about this movie is the boobs. Um, I think you probably also, as no offense, but like a teenage boy who's probably not putting himself in Rose's shoes, you're thinking about Jack. I, I think as a as a woman watching it, it's pretty awesome because the ultimately the movie like isn't actually about their romance or their love story because it doesn't last that long. It's about her realizing that she can be her own person and do all of the things she wants to do. I do remember that. Yeah. She was like, like with the rich fluting dude who was an asshole. Yes. And then, and then she ran off with Jack and That's they tap dance on the fucking bar down in there in the bottom of the ship. Yes. But like, I spoiler, remember all that. Spoiler, it was, it was a he dies. Story. He dies. But ultimately, the movie's about everything she does after that. Like how he's changed her, yes. But like, it's not about her relationship with a man. It's about her, you know, yeah, deciding to live her own yeah. life. And it's a great movie. For what it's worth, I didn't remember any of that, or perhaps I just didn't understand it when I watched it when I was younger. I just remember so the I, ship I, portion. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the movie, right? That's the and movie. And the boobs, obviously. So, yeah. And the boobs, yeah. But, you know, I remember her being a very free-willed woman. She did all her, she did everything she wanted to fucking do. She didn't yeah. let that asshole hold her back. That, uh, again, and Jack and Jack was like, hey, listen, you be you. And I remember that. Yeah. I didn't remember And they fucking do the, they do the ship thing. Do the ship thing. That's correct. Oh, yeah, I remember anyway, that. I hope everyone's enjoyed our fucking uh, Titanic. Take on Titanic. So yes, we could do. The, so yes, I, well the crow sometime. has been consumed multiple times now, and I'm, I'm look, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little full over here. I must say. Well, um, between the Titanic and the Lord of the Rings, surely you guys haven't had time to do anything else. I mean, that's like uh, ninety well, yeah, hours of fucking. Wrong. We've we had we've had lots of time of our hands. We've had lots of time. We watched uh, <laughs> Slumdog Millionaire, the Academy Award winning film by danny boyle one of your favorite direct one of our favorite directors really yeah i like danny boyle a whole lot yeah it's the first time i've seen, seen that movie though came out. never seen it ever never seen it ever oh uh-uh. it's good you should check it out it's about the boxing lady right no it's about like uh i it's dev what's Patel. the boxing lady what what's the boxing lady movie million dollar baby Oh yeah, that's what I'm thinking about. Oh, Lord. <laughs> no. So Slumdog Millionaire is about what then? So it's Dev Patel uh as he's like about like he's playing on the Indian version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and it's like the whole movie is him explaining how he knew the answers up till then. Like that's so cool. he's going back through his life. And it's really great. The music is awesome. The story is really good. Sounds like a Danny Boyle style way of storytelling, I think. I'm just going to move away from him now. Um, it's it's a great movie. You should definitely watch it. I'm pretty sure it's on, it was on HBO or. It's on some sort of Oh, streaming. we watched the Blu-ray, but it, I'm pretty sure it's streaming somewhere, but you should yeah, definitely watch it because it. it's really, really good. And I think it holds up. Like I think, and there are things I didn't notice. Um. And you definitely noticed new things, but I had seen it more than once, and I think you'd only seen it the one time. I think that's probably like maybe the fourth or fifth time I was nah, 
third or fourth time I've seen it. Daggum. I've been missing out. Yeah, we've been we've been watching lots of movies. I think that's it uh as of now uh, that they've at least that we've watched in in their entireties but uh watch we've been watching lots of new girl of course um we finished season two well anna's seen the whole series already but um we finished season two and we are into season three of i think seven six and then a shortened season i think um to be fair a new girl continues to be great recommended to all on netflix and we'll probably co-sign that also, the episodes are very short, so low chance of anyone falling asleep during them. Mm. Oh, hashtag falling asleep, hashtag watch it. Is that what you're saying? Mm-hmm. Oh, and um, the the main character is a teacher. Wow, that might be right up Sarah's alley. We might have to check it out. New Girl Seasons. It's really good. It's very like light and funny and like good for these times, but it's just it's really like it's really good. Quick viewing. Quick viewing is nice, though. Yes. We've been watching yeah. a lot of... Uh, oh, yeah, I got I got catching ups to do once you guys finish up, I guess. I'll have to, we'll get into it. Well, there's not too much more on our end, admittedly. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't think you can. I think it's impossible. I think you've run out of time. Uh, well, we, we've been, we've been, uh, going hand, you know, uh, well, I was going to say hand to hand, but we've been, we've been, uh, we've been playing a little Splendor. Um, nice. One on one. Mano y mano, I guess you could say, and uh, pretty, pretty evenly matched. I beat Anna the first time we played because she didn't fully understand all the rules, which is probably Fair. because of my inadequate, uh, inadequate explanations of them. <laughs> but um, but since then, um, it's 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 been pretty equitable. She kicked my ass like three or four times in a row, but I think technically Damn. I've won the last two. That's and like the last one was like a really close one where she got fifteen in her round and then I had a, had one more chance and I got 16 so I ended up winning nice. the game. So it's pretty tight pretty tight affair so we, we got Splendor on your recommendation so thank yeah, you for that so um, we've come up with a way I've got some friends that are um, uh, they, they're they they're dying for social activity and they've actually come up with a grid to play it remotely um, over over Discord uh, so if that's if that's something that you guys would be interested in um Sarah and I would probably be very excited to play with you guys. We could play against you or play, you know, just 4v4 Splendor. Yeah, um, that would that would be very cool. But I actually had a question. Did Sarah ever finish Star Wars? Yes. Okay. So we also have Star Wars Trivial Pursuit. Um, <laughs> It's not a good choice. <laughs> we probably don't want to play that. <laughs> wait, why? Well, I don't, yeah, I mean, no, no, we no I'm sorry. You misunderstood. Me and Sarah versus the two of you. Okay. We we'll kick your ass. That. We'll kick oh. your ass. I have been dominating. I have been absolutely... Do- I don't think you've won once, have you? Anna has beat me at Star Wars Traveler Pursuit every fucking time we've played. Well, every we fucking need to time. Play. We need to play. I we'll almost won to... once, though. It was very close. We'll, um, we'll, once out of we'll about fi- ten times. We'll figure out a way to play that over the Discord. <laughs> Uh, have some I think wine and some beers we're I all think, about the board games it's just we had yeah, to play them remotely tough. for obvious yeah, reasons yeah for sure so yeah that's that's pretty much it for what Anna and I have been collectively been up to um, I will ask you Anna if there's anything that you want to talk about that's near and dear to your heart that you're up to lately yourself without me sure uh, I've been catching up on Homeland which is in its last season and there's actually only one episode left and I'm all caught up So next Sunday, that show is ending, and it was really good in the beginning, and then the middle went off the rails and was real dumb, Um, but the last couple seasons have been really good, and I'm actually kind of sad that it's ending. Is is Homeland like the uh, the Red Dawn show, like where the Russians evade America? No, that's uh, the man in the high castle, I think you're thinking of. Yeah, no, this is Homeland is the one with Claire Danes where like the first season is she suspects that a soldier who's been like rescued from being held hostage in Afghanistan, like she suspects he's been turned. Oh. Um, but she's a CIA agent and it's just like it's a very sounds pretty cool. Very cool show. Um and then I also recently, literally yesterday, started rewatching the Tudors, which I watched when it was on, which was 13 years ago, and I haven't watched it since, 
and I watched the first six episodes yesterday. So I'm rewatching that and realizing. How's it hold up? It's. Uh, some of the stuff is real bad. It's <laughs> some of the the graphics that like the renderings they've done of like castles that don't exist anymore are just like straight up video game quality. Um, and some of the acting Jonathan Reese Myers is just way over the top sometimes, but I had forgotten what a good cast it is because it's also got Henry Cavill, Maria Doyle Kennedy, James Frain, um, Gabrielle Anwar, I can't remember who else. I was just oh Natalie Dormer, duh, she's in it. She's oh. amazing. She's so she's Anne Boleyn. She's so good. I feel like that was like her first big role, and she was excellent. Um, but yeah, so that's really it's a it's a good thing to just throw on and watch three episodes in a row of or six. Oh, huh. well, there you go, or six. So yeah. Um... <laughs> On my end, I know I know we've been going for a long time. Apologies, listeners. Some, uh, I, you know, I've been told by at least one listener of this show who avidly participates in the liver, uh, the uh, the uh, listeners corner that uh, this is his favorite segment of the show. So I don't feel too bad about being self indulgent here. Um, uh, purely on my end, um, Animal Crossing, but of course, I mean, come on. Well, Anna has played a little bit of the Animal Crossing, but she's been she's been hogging my Switch a little bit. I have caught some fish. Nice. And some insects. It's just, I like it because every once in a while I just steal it and I use, I mainly just run around because I think it's funny to watch them run in circles <laughs> and I liked sneaking up their on bug Zipper. Necks. So I have participated in that as a backseat driver. Nice. Correct. And this one I definitely did myself. I read Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson. Yeah, but whose book was it? But it was Anna's book. Correct. It was Anna's book. I did borrow it from her. That is true. You read a you read a whole book. I read a whole book. Technically, it was actually for school. Um, it was for one wow. of my classes. Um, it was recently adapted into a film with um, Michael B. Jordan, Brie Larson, and uh, Jamie Fox. Correct. Um, was it? Yep. Yeah. Uh, came out late last year, sometime. I think. I think. Or no, earlier this year. I'm sorry. Earlier this year, and then the Blu-ray just came out. So it's. Um, now available for the masses. Um, didn't see the movie. Read the book. Uh, book is great. It's written by uh, Brian Stevenson is a, is a criminal defense lawyer um, who s- started the Equal Justice Initiative in Alabama uh, at a time when death penalty was in full force down down that way and um, unfairly um, impacts racial minorities um, and not wholly surprising for Alabama to be honest, but um, yeah, it's basically kind of his examination of the inequities in the criminal justice system kind of on a, on a like, like there's a few chapters kind of here and there to just like, this is a problem. This is a problem. This is a problem. And he does kind of interesting case studies of different defendants that he's represented um, to kind of give, you know, kind of, kind of a more narrative type um, vision of things so that it kind of really uh, makes it uh I guess a little bit more digestible and than just hard statistics, hard facts and stuff like that. But it's, it is right. a really, really great writing style. It's very interesting. Um, and then kind of the, the main thrust of the book is about um, a man who was wrongfully convicted um, and was to be sentenced to death and was basically um, on death row for, I forget exactly how many years, but I think close to 20 years um, before his, um, his conviction was overturned. And it's, it's an infuriating read as, kind of things of this nature can be just because the case against uh the, the him was complete fucking bullshit and it was obvious to basically anyone involved that it was bullshit and he was basically being railroaded um because they needed to 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 pen a murder on someone um and uh. So yeah, it's uh, it, you know, hard read at times, but I think that just the the way that his writing style was was really really strong and really compelling and obviously for someone in law school, it's completely my shit. But uh, I, I want to watch the movie. Um, I'm hoping that it translated well. So, and you know, it's it's directed by the guy that is going to direct the upcoming Shang Chi movie, and who directed uh, Short Term Twelve, which we talk, oh, we, we talked about last okay, year, which is great. Yeah. So for sure. So yeah, excited to. I, I'll probably try to pick up the Blu-ray at some point. But um, but yeah, 
Um, I think that's it. I think that's finally it on our end. Wow, anyway. you guys have been busy. There was two of us. There was there was a lot to get through. You know, we had we we have we you know we're separate people. We have opinions and we like to talk about. Yeah, them. no, it's okay. It's quite okay. Um, what have you been up to, Andrew? Um, so let's see what I've done. Um, I've been watching a lot of Chip and Joanne Gaines on Fixer Upper on the HGTV. I love Fixer Upper. <laughs> Well, their, so does Sarah. Their new network just got um like delayed. It's such a bummer. Oh, that is a bummer. Cuz we're almost out of we're almost out of episodes. Um and so far we've adapted the shiplap. I've I've cre- I've made shiplap with my hands, hung it on the wall and painted it myself. Well, I didn't paint it myself, but I hung it and then Sarah painted it. Um so that was cool. And then the single most daunting project of my entire life. I painted my kitchen cabinets. I refinished them. I went to the store and I bought a paint gun and I used this paint. I mean, it was a big thing. It took two and a half weeks for me to paint my well, cabinets. I was just going to say, you've talked about this on episodes past, but you were mid project. Can, can you, you're finally done. Finally done. Nice. There is one cabinet that has this weird like thing going on to where like the the face of the wood is like separated. So I need to I need to repair it because um, it looks just like bubbles in the paint. Um, but overall, I mean, I I have a lot of kitchen cabinets, and uh, and everybody that's seen it's been thoroughly impressed. Like it's it it turned out really well. It turned out way 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 better than I initially thought. Chip and Joanna would be proud. Yes, I hope so. Uh, it did. It took a lot of fucking. It was a lot of fucking work. I was being a little um, facetious. I did know that you'd finished. I've seen the pictures. They look good. Yeah, it looks good. I man. um. I also put um. I also put lights underneath the kitchen cabinets. Mm, very nice. Um. I also did bias lighting, like Henry. Um. One of our one of our frequent frequent guests on the show. He's got bias lighting on the back of his TV. Mine's not dynamic like the. Like the the hue lights, but it does it does alleviate some eye strain for sure. Um, let's see, chipping Joanne Gaines, watching all that shit, doing the house projects. I'm gonna build a booth and a table in the kitchen. Uh, I'm getting into the woodworking pretty heavy. The ship lats inspired me. I like working with my hands apparently, so uh, I'm gonna start diving into that. Um, Let's see here. What else have I? Done? I went up to Georgia and rode dirt bikes. My uncle dislocated his shoulder. He he fucked up and fell and dislocated his shoulder. They had to drive the ambulance in the middle of like a goat track in the middle of the woods and pick his ass up. Um, but I drove him back uh, home and he and he's fine now. Um, what else is there? Oh, I got a doggy. I got a great Pyrenees dog. Big white. Goat herding protecting dog, and your dog's name would be. <laughs> His name is Theodore, <laughs> the- Theodore or Teddy. Oh, uh, little Teddy. Oh, little Teddy. There's there's pictures on the Facebook now, but there's him sleeping. I don't know if you can see it there. He's just sleeping. He's a he's a sleepy boy, um, and uh, but yeah, he's gonna be a massive dog. I think they grow up to be like his dad was 110 pounds, so he's gonna be big. There he is sleeping. Another picture of him sleeping. Oh my god, he's so cute. He's a good boy. Um, he kept How old me up is he? Eight weeks. Oh. He's eight weeks old. Um, last night was the first night with him at the house. He kept me up all night. Um, so I'm pretty sleepy now. Um, but ho- Sarah's been home, so she's kept him up all day. So hopefully tonight he sleeps through the night. We'll see what happens. Um, what else has there been? Finish devs. I watched another episode of Clone Wars. I've got I've got to finish. I think I I think the last bit is a two part two part episode. Um, and I've got to finish those two bits. Um, of of Clone Wars. Um, played Risk on Easter. That was cool. I have a wooden version of Risk, and that's fun. I like Risk. Um, 
And I think that's, I think that's really about it, guys. I haven't been, to, I've, it's just been a lot of work, just a lot of, you know, not so much work at the actual conventional work. I mean, I do go there for eight hours, but then I've been coming home and, and Sarah's been at the house, she, you know, she can't go to school and teach now. So, uh, she literally sits around the house and thinks about projects and stuff. And I come home and I, I try to, um, I try to deliver on those. Uh, so I've learned, I've learned how to do things. So that's cool. But, um, I haven't had much in the mind of playing games or, or watching movies or shows or anything like that. So, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I got you. All right. Well, I think without further ado, that that probably will do it for this episode. What do you think? That's it. Yeah, totally. All right. Well, first of all, big thank you to Anna for for making a special cameo appearance on Watch, Review, Repeat for the first time ever and perhaps not the last. (laughs) If, if we are fortunate Bonus enough. episode, double doubles, double doubles. Double doubles, double rings. doubles. We can look forward to some double doubles at some point, perhaps. <laughs> we'll see. Um, thank you all for listening. If you enjoy what you heard, please spread the word. Um, we still haven't figured out what we're going to do for Patreon next in terms of the bonus episode, but maybe maybe it'll be double doubles. Who knows? Who knows? Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll pencil it in for some point, but we'll, we'll figure out when. Um, Patreon.com slash watch, review, repeat is our Patreon link. $2 a month gets you access to all forthcoming bonus episodes. We still got to do Studio Ghibli at some point too, so that's an idea. Um, oh, that'd be a good we started one, that project. Sure. We've got, we got, many, we got many movies we can dive into. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, $2 a month. Bonus episodes, all early access to all regular episodes. Um, we're trying to keep our, our, our regular flow as much as we can in these uh, in these uh, dark times. But um, you know, hopefully, it provides some semblance of joy for for people stuck at home. Uh, at least we hope, anyway. So you know, a lot of people right now are watching a lot of shit at home. Mm-hmm. It's true. A lot of people. Everybody's watching shit at home. I, I think. I think we're proof positive of that. Certainly, there is. Uh, n- there is just no excuse for somebody not to email us what the fuck they've been watching. Tell us what you've been watching. True. Very true. Recommend some stuff, man. We you haven't had the listener's stuff. corner in, in weeks. Yeah. And I'm, it's because my dad hasn't been on an airplane in weeks. But <laughs> seriously, like everyone is stuck at home. So like, come on. Send us send us recommendations. Like again, Tiger King. Fuck it, man. If you got thoughts on Tiger we'll do King, it. send them no, our I'll way. Tell you send them our, like, we'll, we'll, we'll at least entertain like your thoughts about it but yeah i mean anything else would be appreciated too um so yes our gmail account is watch review repeat at gmail.com uh i have notifications on my phone i see when emails come in so i will look at them um and uh so send us send us some some recommendations things you've been up to you know anything like that we'd be happy to uh, look at them talk about them on the show talk about them on future episodes um otherwise you can get in touch with us on twitter at wrr pod is our twitter account we're on Facebook. Just search for Watch, Review, Repeat. Um, and if you need help locating any of those things, head to our website, watchreviewrepeat.com. Intro and outro track, Mechanolith by Kevin McLeod, licensed under the Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 license. Next episode, I think we talked about uh, the uh, Chris Hemsworth Netflix extraction movie um, when we saw Is the that trailer. next? And that drops in just a few days' time. Holy shit, I'm uh, pumped. <laughs> so, you know, uh, what, what are you going to do? You know, we got to find something to cover, so that might be it. If there's anything else that, that comes on our radar, then then maybe we'll switch gears and do that instead. But um, desperate times, desperate measures, I say. Um, so, um, yeah, Andrew, uh, why, don't you, why don't you go ahead and take us out? Take care now. Bye-bye then. Bye. Later's on the Menjay. <laughs>